Okay, yay, finally. <clears throat> I've never had so much problem before in my life getting on. First, it said I didn't have a camera attached and I had to restart. Then when I restarted, it wouldn't let me go from the backstage onto the live. And oh my gosh, just what an exciting afternoon. Okay, welcome. Hello, everybody. Welcome to uh, the Cold War Pepper. This is Lee. <clears throat> I have some good news and I have some bad news. So first, number one, um, <clears throat> do me a favor. Go back and watch that video I did about my fears and uh, uh, where I mentioned contingency survival. It's about a 10-minute video. Some woman uh, came on and said, hey, there's much cheaper ways to do it. You can substitute other OTC over-the-counter stuff for um, you know, prescription medications. So I said, okay, I'll tell you what. I'll give you 48 hours, uh, cite your sources, show me, give me the proof. And, uh, you know, if you don't do that within 48 hours, I'll, I'll just determine you're a troll and delete your, your comment. Very shortly thereafter, uh, I got a, a, another email that says, how unethical of you to delete my comment. I spent all that time working on it. And I said, what comment? You know, I, I don't I don't delete anything. Uh, I told you I would delete you if I, I gave you a chance, 48 hours. And uh, so I said, okay, well, if you're going to redo it, I recommend, you know, because it could be something that YouTube, YouTube is doing. So I recommend that you just do it on a piece of paper or in, uh, in Word and then copy it as a comment to YouTube. And then that way, if anything happens to it, you've got it. All that work is saved and you can put it on. Then she came back and accused me of deleting it a second time. I said, hey, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pin this up top because all of my subscribers know, uh, you know, had I deleted you uh, with that 48 hour notice, that would have been my first deletion ever. Uh, so I just don't delete people. I'm, I mean, trolls are out there, but obviously this woman is a troll. Uh, so go back and watch her. You know, it's kind of kind of curious, kind of interesting, but, you know, that's that's the way it is. Uh, there are some great channels that are just getting trolled to death. <clears throat> support, um, oh gosh, Prepping by Faith. Um, you know, she uh, she does a lot of faith-based stuff in her in her channel and gets trolled an awful lot because of that. And so uh, I would ask that you support her. We get, we get trolled quite a bit. The one troll, uh, well, there's two trolls <clears throat> and I haven't unsubscribed from anybody either. Uh, one troll, I just, you know, he did two 10 minute, um, um, what do you call them? Responses, video responses. And both of them, he didn't cite his sources. They were, they were completely unscientific. Uh, both of them about nuclear. He did not know what he was talking about. Uh, just, I, I just don't follow him anymore. As a matter of fact, he was one of my monitor, uh, one of my moderators and I deleted him because if you're going to be that unethical, then I can't have you as a moderator. Uh, then the other one of course is, uh, uh, a guy that was there, there are about five of us content creators. He was going around and just really hammering all of us. He got thrown off of YouTube. He came back under a different name, uh, was hammering all of us again. and got thrown off a second time. I haven't seen him since, but uh, you know, that's just the way it is. There, there are trolls out there. Thank you for being such a fantastic group, supportive group. I love y'all. Let me see who all's here. Um, we'll go back over to, no, I can't let you out girls. Helen. Just, just a minute. The girls went out, and they're going to be out five minutes and went back in. <clears throat> Helen goes in the bedroom to watch TV and closes the door so that she doesn't disturb me while I'm doing this, and, and uh, so she didn't hear me that... We need to let the, there they go. They're barking already. Oh, well, hello, Scott. Uh, let me see who else. Hello, Tofu, one of my fantastic moderators. Um, there I am. Golly. Oh, yeah, because I was said finally. Uh, Diana, too. Welcome. Welcome, Butch Graves. Scott Hummer, of course, already. Karen Lemoine. Is, is that right? Uh, is it, it, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Lemoine. Uh, Diana, too. Amazing Grandma, welcome. Um, gosh, 
I knew they were going to do this, be, be, a, be a nuisance to the neighbors. Lori's Thrifty Kitchen Pantry, almost home. Welcome. And another one of my great moderators. <clears throat> okay, and Pat Butler, welcome. That, you know, it's, 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 it's society. Um, <clears throat> we have our, our, our Alliance of Ministries that, that meets, and, and it's, it's very interfaith. Uh, so I represent uh, one Catholic church, another Catholic church was being represented there today. Then we have, you know, the uh, uh, university's chaplain. We have uh, Lutheran, Episcopalian. We have two Methodist churches. Uh, the Baptists don't participate anymore. Um, we have Presbyterian church. We have a Jewish um congregation let's call it they don't have a rabbi uh, they, they, it's a lay uh congregation but anyhow we all get together <clears throat> the interesting thing is today i said hey i would like for you all to think uh taking a look at our country and where we are and all the seriousness that's going on we need to start planning now what are we going to do if there is a depression if there is hello amy uh if there is any little lone prepper welcome if something happens and shenanigans, welcome to you, welcome to you too, uh, where we have to have soup lines and bread lines, what are we going to do? How are we going to organize that? How are we going to get the stuff if it's so unaffordable in the future that we can't afford it? Why aren't we getting it now? Hello, shenanigans. Why aren't we getting it now and making plans on how we're going to feed all those people who are going to be disenfranchised uh, if anything happens? And so... <clears throat> I yelled, but you didn't hear me because the door was closed. Thank you for. Don't let them yeah. work out. No, they were scratching at the door. They wanted out desperately. And so I figured and it was Izzy primarily. <clears throat> um, she heard him barking from the bedroom. So she's going to go get him and bring him back in. Hello, Amy. Um, and then, um, so, so, you know, uh, because of that, one of the churches, and it was a Protestant church told me that they have a prepper in their group and they've got a whole storehouse worth of stuff. So now I am uh, getting aligned with this one church uh, around preparedness and food preparedness and everything else. She told me they had a whole stockyard or, or stock room full of freeze dried and dehydrated foods. Uh, another church I would love to see there that, that doesn't participate is the LDS, uh, the Latter day Saints. They are the, the preppers ex extraordinary. That would be fantastic. So some good news. Uh, we have confirmation that a Patriot missile shot down a hypersonic uh, missile from Russia. And that, that is phenomenal news. That's outstanding news. Remember that Reagan, uh, actually it was before Reagan, uh, but we, we stopped all of our stocking and building of bomb shelters in the U.S., got rid of all the dosimeters and everything else. And hello, K-Bird. And... Uh, so and, and Pepper Book Club, uh, but we got rid of all that because we were putting our defenses primarily on we don't have to spend all that money and, and have the expiration of foods and everything else. If we can develop Star Wars, which basically is going to get any uh, nuclear warhead before it ever enters into U.S. airspace. And so we put all of our defenses into stopping ICBMs before they hit our country. And uh, that's gone unproven. You know, we, we did have a couple uh, test firings from um, what's that Air Force base in California. They shot one down that was launched from a, a ship at sea. And uh, so, so we've had a couple um, successful deals. But finding out that the Patriot can take down a hypersonic, that's fantastic news. So my fears of, of you know, ICBM, SRBM uh, attack on the U.S., uh, I, I have a lot greater confidence now that we are going to be able to survive that even better than what we imagined originally. So, so that's fantastic good news. Dollar, of course, is continuing to decline. Uh, we, we see that uh, Pakistan is in total disarray, and uh, the Taliban uh, because remember, Pakistan, the longest border uh, other than Russia that, that Afghanistan has is with Pakistan. And remember, it was Islamabad, Pakistan, where we got Osama bin Laden from going across from uh, um, uh, Afghanistan. <clears throat> and uh, so Pakistan 
is now part of the revolutionaries that are going against uh, the establishment in Pakistan or the Taliban from Afghanistan. Bad news is Pakistan has nukes. So, you know, that's, and, and the, now they're not ICBMs, they're not intercontinental, but they are uh, long range. So, you know, they could take on Russia, they could take on India, their primary uh, enemy. <clears throat> of course, they also, uh, the Taliban are aligned with the Iranians. And so, you know, that whole mess over in the, that powder keg. We also see that there's a lot of confrontation going on right now between Israel, Jordan, and Israel and the Gaza Strip, Hezbollah. I mean, the world is just going crazy. So <clears throat> I wanted to talk this evening about what are we going to do about it? What can we do about it? Well, remember, we don't worry about things that we can't control or things that we can't mitigate. And so I wanted to talk about 15 things we can do. <clears throat> if there's an EMP, if there's a CME, we've got another projected class four, uh, high class four, possible cl low class five going to hit. Uh, sometime tomorrow from the sun, we did see a CME that is earth facing. Um, all kinds of strange things going on uh, with with <clears throat> with the weather. So chances of us losing electricity are high. So I'm going to give you 15 things that could happen. And the reason I'm giving you these 15 things, I'm going to put them down in the show notes. I don't care if people watch it after we do this. <clears throat> the more important thing is, that you start asking yourself questions about these. So let me go through the 15 things. I'm going to ask you to start thinking, <clears throat> what are the questions I need to ask in order to overcome what it is that we're talking about with what happens when the grid goes down? Number one, no electricity in your home. For me, number one issue is no coffee, okay? <clears throat> so my electric coffee pot, you know, Helen's Keurig machine, uh, they're gone. So now we have to make coffee a different way. Uh, but then how else, you know, how are you going to cook, um, refrigerate, freeze? How are you going to bake bread? How are you going to blend? How are you going to mix? How are, you know, all those different kinds of things. So all of your small appliances in the home, unless you have hand versions, aren't going to work. <clears throat> so the question here is, if I were to turn off the electricity in my home today, how would I cook for the next 72 hours? What would I use? What would I need? Hand, uh, manual can openers instead of electric, you know, start thinking those kinds of things. <clears throat> Number two, uh, and this is probably the single most important one. I was watching a uh, fantastic discussion earlier today with the uh, survivalist prepper, <clears throat> and he had a guest on, and th the whole discussion was, if we have a nuclear war, what's your number one concern? And their number one concern was water. <clears throat> and I think that should be our number one concern too. So uh, we are going to have without any, any, um, well, jet boil is a great answer, Scott, for how long, uh, you know, so, so start thinking about <clears throat> maybe you might have to have, and remember it takes six months to a year to cure a tree. Um, so you can use it as firewood. So that means that if you think you're going to have a jet boil last for six months, you need to start cutting and curing that firewood today in order for that six worth worth of jet boil fuel to be there and run out just as your, your wood uh, takes over as far as being able to cook it. No public water purification or distribution. So how are you going to, number one, collect, two, store, number three, purify your water. Uh, number three, you aren't going to have any clean clothes. <laughs> so how are you going to wash and dry your clothes, wash, rinse, and dry, dry your clothes uh, without electricity? Number four, you aren't going to bathe as often as you do now. You probably won't have showers. We're probably going to be reverting back to, to um, you know, uh, what do they call that, where you just take a wash rag and, and wipe yourself down. Uh, you know, baths will be not too often, uh, not as, as as frequent as you would like. Hello, Dragon Slayer. And... Uh, so how are you going to, you know, and we're coming up on summer and people perspire a lot and you just get funky. So how are you going to, number one, clean your clothes? Number two, clean your body. Uh, and I think hand washing is going to be really, really critical because, you know, that's going to, you, you're, if you're going to prepare food, if you're going to uh, eat or anything like that, you want to have clean hands. That's, you know, our bodies, think of the immunities that we had 150 years ago. They aren't there. You know, we, we've over sterilized our bodies to the point now to where small things can mean a lot as far as infections and uh, 
causing things such as dysentery and diarrhea and stuff like that. Hello, Dave Simmons. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, number five, no climate control. You aren't going to have air conditioning or heating. So my 2200 uh, uh, volt, my 2200 BTU uh, air conditioner, which is good for a 200 square foot room, uh, arrived. We've got to unpack it, test it, make sure that it's good to go, uh, see whether or not I'm going to return it to Amazon. Uh, but we do have plans that that will be able, you know, we'll be able to support that 120 volt, 2200 BTU, 200 square foot room uh, air conditioner off of the solar panels we currently have, as long as they aren't taken out by a CME or a uh, EMP. <clears throat> Number five, no sewage disposal. What are you going to do uh, as far as sewage? <clears throat> and... Uh, how are you going to dispose of it? How are you going to care for it? How are you going to, um, and then along with the sewage, uh, you know, you can only stockpile so much uh, toilet paper before you can no longer get your vehicles in your garage. Uh, likewise to that, number seven, <clears throat> trash disposal. Uh, so, you know, when you empty out a can uh, or anything like that, how are you going to dispose of that? How are you going to dispose of it in a way that you aren't attracting rodents, animals, and insects? Uh, so, you know, those are going to become very, very critical for you. Um, number eight, no emergency services, no fire department, no police, no ambulance, no emergency room, no pharmacy, uh, no mortuary services. That's going to become an important one as well. So, I would ask that you start thinking, what are we going to do in lieu of those services? You know, I have a fire extinguisher in every room. Is that going to be enough? Um, you know, we're going to have to have, and this is going to be number 15, we're going to have to have our own self-protection. We're going to have to be our own police department. Uh, as far as ambulance, you know, you're going to need some good first aid techniques. Uh, in ER, you know, of course, you aren't going to have an ER physician available to you. Um Pharmaceutical, you know, that's where stuff like this comes in, into play. How are you going to? And, and if you're going to use, if you get Dr. J, uh, uh, Dr. Alton's, um, what's the name of the book? Uh, Antibiotics, I believe, and, and something. Uh, get that. It talks about how you can substitute certain uh, veterinarian uh, type of antibiotics. That's only valid for another 21 days, three weeks from today, starting three weeks from today, actually on the 1st of June, you have to have a prescription from a veterinarian in order to get any of the fish antibiotics. So if you, if that's your plan, you want to go that cheaper route as far as getting fish antibiotics and using those for human consumption, not something that we strongly recommend, but that is an option. Uh, then, you know, you're going to have to get that done in the next 21 days before it goes to prescription only. Uh, of course, those of you who live close to the border, it's very easy to go across the border and get that from a pharmacist across the border. And uh, they're usually the, the exact same things that we have here in the U.S. <clears throat> um, let me see uh, where we are. No modus, no medicine over the counter or, or prescription. So make sure you get both of those, your prescription medications as much as you can, and the same thing with your over-the-counter medications. Be very, very cautious. Some of these medications, and check them, do, do, make sure you do a good search on your medications. Some of them can turn toxic after their expiration date. You don't want to take something that's going to do more harm than what you already have. So check out... Um, check out and make sure that that anything you have that once it gets, if it's one of those that goes toxic after its expiration date, dispose of it on its expiration date. Don't use it at all. Hello, Susan's rambling. Hello, John Poole. <coughs> John Poole, what a great name. Uh, the, the, the special forces major that was in charge of, of our uh, team that went over and did the counter terrorist stuff for the Seoul Olympics in 1988 was John Peel. Uh, so all you do is sub substitute E's for those O's, and you've got this uh, fantastic Special Forces major I worked for. Great guy. Um, let me see who else. Susan's Ramblings is here. Fantastic.
Oh, no. Oh, Susan's ramblings. I'm so sorry for that. Speaking of which, I took the bandage off. Here's what it looks like the two days after uh, the, the Chihuahua scratch where she was jealous and wanting my attention. It wasn't anything malicious. She was just trying to get my attention and, and uh, you know, was pawing. And then I needed to, uh, um, what I really needed to do was, was trim her toenails. That's my fault that I, I allowed her toenails to get that long. But uh, so, so anyhow, topical antibiotics is what I'm doing with this right now. Topical antibiotics and uh, keeping it clean and all that kinds of stuff. I shouldn't be touching it with my hand right now. Okay, back to number 10, no communications. That may not mean much to you, but, you know, I mean, uh, think about it. There's no texting, no internet, uh, no telephones, no television, no radio, uh, no 911. So what does it mean? Well, that means you don't have any advanced notice of weather. You don't know when bad weather is going to be happening, whether or not it's going to affect you. Are you is there a tornado in your area? Is there a hurricane approaching? Is there an earthquake? Are there earthquakes nearby? All those critical information about what we have uh, currently uh, through our news and weather reports is not going to be available to you uh, after the, the, the grid goes down. <clears throat> so same thing with news, local international national you know have they crossed the border do we need to start preparing defenses for for an onslaught of something an army or something attacking is red dawn happening we won't know uh because all of our news services won't be there to tell us hello lady hammer um and then um uh, number 11 there won't be any fuel available remember you have to have electricity and, and some of the gas stations are going to have generators that might keep them active for three to five days after the electricity goes down. Uh, at, at, and that's optimistic. Uh, so they'll be able to drain their tanks probably. But after that, after, I'm going to say that after um, three point, uh, after, after three to five days, you probably are not going to find that much gasoline available. Uh, so what does that mean? That means there's no tractors. That means there's no combines. There's no thrashers. There's no trucks transporting the raw grain to the market or the raw milk to, to the dairy processor or the raw cat or, or the, the live cattle to the meat processing facility. That also means that there's no way to process it once it gets there. That also means that if even if they do get it processed, there's no way to get it back to delivered to uh, through the distribution system from the wholesaler to the retailer and then out to you. So all those things that you currently buy on a regular basis will not be available to you. Uh, speaking of which, even if it was available to you, um, there won't be any uh, banking. So credit cards won't be processed and you won't be able to use a credit card. They probably won't take a check because there won't be any way. A check is another form of an electronic transfer of funds. They submit the check, they get a transfer of funds from that account to their account uh, because you've authorized that transfer of funds from one account to another electronically. Uh, so no credit cards, no checks. You're not going to have any means of paying for things. Now, I will tell you, I am reading a fantastic book. Let me get it here, uh, called A Square Meal. I think I should, oh no, I lost my page. I flipped it up and lost my page. Oh, well, we got it. I think that I think this is it. That was a notepad that I was keeping stuff on. Uh, so I'm, I'm pretty much, you know, halfway through it. Uh, Square Meal, fantastic synopsis of uh, from World War One. Basically, what we did for food for this for our for our soldiers overseas in World War One, up through the Great Depression. Right now, it's entering into 1930s historically and things that were done. And uh, you know, at the very beginning of the, of the this. The, they're interviewing this one person who was in Nebraska uh, who had very fertile land and they had chickens and they had, uh, they had dairy cattle and they had cattle and they had uh, wheat and everything else. And the bad thing was they could produce all this stuff on the farm. They would take it to town and nobody could pay them for it. There was nothing there to give them in exchange for the food that they had for sale. And, it, you know, it's talking about this one girl uh, crying at the end of the day because she planted these onions. She had these uh, green onions and she spent, you know, half a day 
washing the dirt off of them so her dad, dad can take them to market in town. And out of the 50 bunches of green onions, you know, tying them together into bunches, out of the 50 bunches that she washed and tied, he brought home 48 of them and they just got thrown into the compost pile. And, you know, so because people couldn't pay for it. And so that's kind of the direction that the country is heading right now. So just think about it. Even if you have something, what is somebody going to give you? Uh, yesterday at, at our men's breakfast, uh, I, you know, we were talking and, and the subject of, of, you know, came up. And I said, gosh, I would really love to have a, a 6.5 millimeter Creedmoor. And uh, he says, oh, I know a guy who's got one for sale. And he texted him. The guy called me trying to sell it to me while we're still in the meeting. And I said, okay, what do you want for it? And he told me, and I, I came home and told her, and she says, how many guns can you hold at one time? You know, I mean, do you really need another one? And I said, nah, not really. So anyhow, so this morning I thought about it. I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm not going to offer cash. I'm going to just sell them. Hey, you know what I'll do? I will give you 11 ounces of silver. Will you take 11 ounces of silver in exchange for uh, your 6.5 Creedmoor? And I haven't heard back from them. Don't know. You know, we'll see what happens. Uh, that's a little bit more as far as value than what he was asking for it. But we'll see what whether he knows it or not. So, hi. Uh, let me see. Leader Hammer, Scrapper. Hello, Triple G Farms. Welcome. And uh, so then, uh, number 15, and the most important of all, is people are going to be in a frenzy. Uh, people are going to be... Um, uh, people are going to be uh, crazy. Uh, people are going to be demanding. I mean, it's going to be a super Black Friday. You know, you've seen how um, crazy people get on Black Friday, you know, scrambling for things and fighting for things. It's going to be Black Friday times 10. Uh, so, so stay away from those people and make sure that you have a means of self-defense. So, let me go back up, catch up with the chat. And those are the 15 things I wanted to point out to you to be prepared for. Ask yourself questions, and I'll have them in the show notes at the end of the, uh, at the end of the show, by tomorrow. And, uh, you know, ask yourself the questions. Do I have this covered? And uh, what if? Do a whole bunch of what ifing in your, in your uh, experience and your thoughts and everything else. So let me see if I can't get my mouse to work here and go up here. And let me see, we'll start here. I was just diagnosed. Nope, that's not it. So Scott Hummer, thank you for putting in that book from uh, Dr. Burns and Nurse Amy. I appreciate that. Um, let me see here. Yes, please do. Please keep Susan's ramblings. All of our, uh, there's Manny. Hi, Manny. Uh, yeah, and that's that, you know, old age, and I take blood thinners because of my old age. And so that a couple of things happen as you age. Number one, you bruise very easily. And number two, your, your skin gets thinner. And so, you know, that you, small scrapes become major scrapes. Another thing that happens as you get older is osteopenia or osteoporosis. And, uh, you know, the, you're, you get brittle bones. <clears throat> so that's another one of those things that happens that probably... If I had taken the same fall at age 30 that I took at age 69, I would not have broken my hip. I can almost guarantee it. You know, I mean, I mean, I did worse stuff than that in jump school. Uh, so, you know, I mean, just, you know, it, it's one of the blessings of getting old. Now, I, I watched a fantastic show today, and it's a, a biblical-based food show. And she was talking about how to build up... Uh, how to eat certain foods to counteract because you have to have your uh, stem cells. And she was talking about how in elderly, you have to eat certain things in order to maintain the stem cells. And she gave the amount of time that it takes certain parts of the body. I took notes, uh, certain parts of the body to heal uh, for the stem cells to regenerate you know, certain parts of the body. Let me see if I can find it here. Um, really interesting topic. I, I really thought she was fantastic. And, and, and it's all based off of uh, some, some food stuff that she got out of the Old Testament. So let me see here. Okay, there you go. Uh, so regenerate stem cells. For the digestive tract, uh, it takes three to five days to repair stem cells there. That's why. It, and so this also is why sometimes when you take medications, 
the medications are regenerating the stem cells, allowing them to regenerate. So these regeneration durations are basically how long it also takes to heal. Uh, lungs, it takes eight days. Uh, skin takes two weeks. Red blood cells takes four months. Uh, fat cells, it takes eight years. Not with me. Fat cells take five minutes. Um, uh, skeletal, uh, so bones and stuff like that, it takes 10 years. That's why you want to make sure you have plenty of calcium and vitamin D in your uh, food intake for a long period of time. She says it's going to take up to 10 years for my hip to totally re restore. Uh, the the uh, orthopedic surgeon said, I probably will not have uh, anywhere close to my normal use of my hip until two years after the surgery. Um, she says that the Mediterranean diet is the best uh, for, for seniors. Uh, and then she said that try intermittent 48 hour fasting. Avoid fast foods, sugar, and high salt intake is what she said. So, you know, that's just kind of the blessing of being an old septuagenarian. How's that for, for a fancy word? Um, let me see where we are. Yeah, so so uh, Lori gets to go home tomorrow, I believe. Uh, at least that's what I think I saw. Um, uh, yes. Uh, well, I'm, I'm current on all my shots, uh, except for one. Um, I'm not a big fan of the one that we just recently had approved through emergency uh, without the standard approval process, you know. Uh, so I'm not up to date on that one, but I'm up to date on everything else. Uh, Well, I'm lagging too. I'm 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 watching the the, the computer that's showing me uh, how how I'm looking to you, and it looks like I'm I'm stalling every once in a while. That uh, it's it's processing through to get through it. Uh, so Dragon Slayer says she's got a well, two creeks, and an underground spring that runs down by the mountain into the creek. So she's good there. Uh, she does need a better solar pump on the well, absolutely. Uh, and then make sure that you have that protected against any kind of EMP or CME. Uh, yes, growing your food is critical. However, there's a good learning curve on that. I was just complaining to my wife today. Uh, I had one blueberry plant that was doing, I planted two last year. I planted two blueberry bushes. One died. The other one is not doing well, but it is still alive. So I bought a second blueberry bush two weeks ago. I went outside and it's almost gone. So I've got maybe half of one left out of the three that I've planted. Uh, so I'm not doing too well with blueberries. I've, I've acidified the soil like you would not believe. Maybe I even I've over acidified it. That might be it. Uh, but anyhow, um, you know, everything else, it looks to be going pretty good. My squash, my, my peppers, uh, tomatoes are doing really good this year. Uh, potatoes are doing well. Um, haven't got the strawberries on the, in the ground yet. I need to get the strawberries in the ground. My garlic has not come up. Neither has my ginger. Uh, so I don't know, you know, I'm, 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 I'm learning. I'm, I'm making mistakes and learning. I wish I'd learned a long time ago. Um, I need to get some beans in the ground and things like that. Uh, yes. So communications is going to be a tough one and, and, uh, make sure you have those meetup plans planned in advance so that you know what you're going to do in case the communications do go down. Um, okay, so Dave says that they have to bring in generators. Uh, they don't have them resident. I know that the, we have a Valero here not too far from now, so we have a shell too. The shell did not have uh, a built-in uh, Generac, but the, the Valero does have a Generac. And I don't know how long their gas supply is or their fuel supply is. They might even be drawing off their own tanks. That uh, that would make uh, perfect sense to me. But, uh, you know, that could be what they're doing. Hello, Scrapper. And um, let me see. Uh, let me see where I am here. Barter is good. I don't know. Let me let me tell you my thoughts about barter. And uh, you know, and and so it's it's kind of 
equal to what we're hearing here. Uh, you can have, and, and I, I, I personally, with the exception of oatmeal, uh, so oatmeal and Vienna sausage, I, I have both of those uh, here as a barter because I'm going to give those away for something that I may want. <clears throat> but I also am just going to give those away uh, because that's what I am compelled to do, um, you know, to help my fellow fellow man. Um, so I don't buy things with the intention of trading it away. I, I would rather spend my money on the things that I think I'm going to need and, and focusing on me than if I have extras, I can trade it. My opinion is that only 5% of the population is preparing for what's going to be happening. That means 95% of the population out there does not have what I might want or need uh, because they're totally unprepared. So, you know, why would I go out of my way to get something that I don't want that I'm going to trade away for them for something that they don't have? Now, remember, barter is two people engaging in a discussion. I have this, they want it, they have this, you want it, and you arrive at a decision on the fair, equitable trade between the two. What's the chances of that going to happen? Slim to none. Now, maybe if we have markets in Selko, Begovic, uh, in the Bosnian War, as well as Furfala Aguirre down in Argentina, as well as Venezuelan Prepper, all emphasize this. You know, get what you think you need, and, and these guys have all lived through it, and then, you know, find out later on, you know, in, in one case, uh, uh, Soko Dagovic talks about a neighbor who gave away an ounce of gold uh, for a regimen of antibiotics for his wife. Uh, so that was the trade they got there. And, and, and some of the things that they wanted, it, it's totally dependent upon the timeline in after whatever the apocalyptic event it is. Uh, he said that initially, because we're so used to having light at night, uh, matches and candles were extremely expensive. But then as candles waned and there weren't any to be had, they didn't have any value because people got so used to being dark at night that if somebody came up with a candle, nobody wanted it. I mean, it was, I mean, they wanted it, but they weren't willing to pay what they were willing to pay earlier in the apocalyptic event. So, you know, you've got the event, you've got the timeline, you've got preparedness of other people versus yourself. So all these things come into play with barter and I'm just not willing to play that game. Uh, so I, I'm not as big a fan of barter as are a lot of other people. Um, yeah, and so so that's kind of where I am, you know, and, and this is kind of reinforcing it uh, as far as, uh, you know, what happened back then. And, and, and it's also giving you some good ideas of, on things to uh, stock up on. And so I'll probably do a book review of this uh, when I finish it. I hope to be done here pretty cool, pretty quickly. Um, hello, Utah Mike. And let me see here. And then uh, okay, Triple G is sharing a channel. Okay, so Dragon Slayer, she's got kids and many kids, grandkids in all states. Uh, they all know where she is, and she and fairly well trained. Smart. That's great. Um, so, so as it is right now, I, I have a single child, uh, a lone child, an, an only child, and uh, she's seven minutes by car away from us. And that changes at the end of this month. She's moving to New Jersey, and so my child and grandchildren will be far, far away. As a matter of fact, all the stuff that I have given her, they have to pay for their own move. So all the stuff that I've given her, um, bug out bags, self-defense items, um, long-term storage foods, cases of food and everything else, she has brought over because she's unwilling to pay to ship that. So uh, all of a sudden I have a lot more stuff than I had originally intended to have. Uh, so, you know, now, now I've encroached into another bedroom and my wife is not too happy about that. Um, Yes, I, I wholeheartedly agree. I think people are going to be totally crazy, and and it's going to be unbelievable. <clears throat> so one of the local guys is a gun trainer. He tries to deal only only deal on precious metals. Oh wow, that would be phenomenal. I'd, I'd love to meet him. 
where are you, Ark Levin? Oh, Ark, Arkansas. Yeah. Um, so I went up to Pineville. Is that right? Pinedale, Pineville. Uh, and there was a guy who was selling a, a, a 34 foot, uh, uh, red trailer. And I went up there and, and, uh, gosh, those roads are something else. And it was so windy uh, up in those, uh, up there, you know, in, you would think in the mountains like that, that it would not be, uh, as noticeable, but I was afraid driving around some of those corners and, and, uh, just with the pickup, I had an F-350 at the time. I can imagine what it would be like with an F-350 and a 34-foot trailer. Golly. Yeah, if you can, I, I strongly recommend having about $1,000 worth of cash, at least. Uh, if you can stash it away somewhere, uh, you know, that would be fantastic. Make sure you come up with good places to hide your stash or, or have a good safe. Um for years, my parents had these cans that looked like oil cans, Pennzoil cans with a screw top lid. And so we had all of our stuff, uh, precious stuff in, in these Pennzoil cans out in the garage. Uh, you know, that was precious metals and, and, and uh, some of the jewelry and things like that were in these cans out in the garage where thieves typically would not look. And uh, so if you're going to have... Uh, any precious metals or any cash at home, make sure you have a very good safe hiding place or a very good safe uh, where you're going to protect those because, you know, people will try to get those. Um, okay, let me see. Oh, I'm sorry. Is that, I, I guess the way you're saying that that's going to be an IV, an infusion. Um Yeah, I like it when, when family is close. Uh, my, my father's side of the family is up in the Chicago area. My mother's side of the family is up in Northwest Missouri. And, uh, you know, with, with a couple exceptions. But uh, the only thing that's down in here would be my, were, were my parents, my sibling. Uh, of course, our in-laws are all in this area. Helen's family is from about two hours north of here. And uh, so we used to go up there when my mother-in-law was alive. We'd go up there probably two weekends a month. And that, that was great. I, I just, I think having family around is so important. Uh, hello, Lisa Marie Smith. Welcome. Thank you for your kind words. Um, okay. And Astatine85. Wow. Hello and welcome. Um, let me see here. I'm thinking of buying... Uh, shed kits for people to turn small homes. That's a great idea. That That is a great idea. That's the same concept as the tiny homes. Yeah. Um, one of the ones that I'm concerned about, and I saw somebody, uh, I was watching a movie or a YouTube about uh, Ukrainian women in the villages cooking. And this woman had this humongous uh, pit, fire pit. I forget what it's called. And, uh, but she was making a pizza. And so she lowered this pizza on a pan over this pit that had all this wood burning down at the bottom as a coal pit. And it became kind of like an oven. I, I think it's called a tambouri. Is that right? For those of you who know far more than I do, um, I, I'm going to guess, I'm going to say that's what it's called a tambouri, but please forgive me. I, I'm not high probability. I'm wrong. Uh, but anyhow, and, and she had it in, she, there was this awning she had so it was kind of like a pavilion and so she had her outdoor stove she had this tambouri she had um a bread uh, oven you know and and everything in this uh awning uh outside away from the house i guess because it gets hot and humid and she doesn't want to cook inside the house but uh you know everything was done in this open air kitchen outside uh, I thought that was really neat. That's probably what I'll have to do here. Um, if you look at a lot of the settlers' houses here in Central Texas, if you go down to the LBJ Museum or anything like that, what you end up with is you've got this house, and the middle portion is open, and then you've got a room on each end. And so, you know, the roof runs this way. You've got a room here, a room here. In the middle, you've got the area where they cooked. And so that way in the summer, because summers here in Texas are dreadful, uh, you didn't, you weren't heating up the rooms that you were sleeping in. 
uh, let me see here. I think personal opinion, I don't have anything to I don't have anything to back this up. This is just my personal opinion. I think probably Florida is the most prepped of all the states. Personal opinion. Uh, that's just my feeling. I don't have anything to prove that. That's just my kind of uh, what would you call it? An accidental uh, observation. Oh. Well, I hope you feel better, little on prepper. I'm sorry that you're feeling bad. Uh, let me see here. Okay. So we are getting down to about 10 minutes left. Let me see here. Uh, Lady Hammerhill, Redmond Real Salt has all the trace minerals on body needs. Uh, way better than the umbrella bleached sodium. That was uh, Pepper, uh, Alaska Pepper was talking about that earlier today. Um, so that's, that's fantastic. He was saying the, that exact same thing. Uh, Rome the Gentleman, welcome, welcome. Good to see you. Um, Okay, so you are going home tomorrow. That is confirmed. You've got it all taken care of, and uh, so happy for you. I, I know you're you got that new haircut. You're feeling a lot better. Yeah, you know, it just feels sometimes things just feel good, and you know things work out. and And I'm so happy that that, that things are working out and that you are feeling better. Um, yeah, I, I tell you what, Katrina, where where I was. Uh, I was at a little place called Pass Christian, Pass Christian, Pass Saint Christian uh, in Mississippi. And uh, I mean, the only thing left in the town was basically the foundation of the Catholic Church. <clears throat> and everything else had been washed out to sea. US 80, the asphalt was washed out to sea. It, it was crazy. It was, it was a terrible, terrible thing. Uh, so shenanigans uh, takes takes the, the, uh, the Lee uh, gardening. Uh, course and, and applies it at his home on a regular basis or her home. Um, let's see where you are. So uh, Amy didn't have her, her, her uh, ginger didn't make it either. Um, let's see where we are. One of the things that concerns me, Manny, about barter um, let me see, I, that didn't come up, and I, and I wanted it to. One of the things that concerns me about barter is getting there and getting back and having somebody to watch my back. Then if I have somebody to watch my back while I'm going there and going back, who's going to be watching my, my, my hunker down location? So you've got to have a whole crew of people in order to make barter really work. It's not something you can do as an individual. So I, I wholeheartedly agree with you. I think it's going to be something that's going to be very, very um, difficult. And uh, Scott Scott is pointing out very well that that uh, and 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 as a matter of fact, what I'm just talking about about varying your route there and back and having somebody watch your backside and all kinds of things. Selco has some. If you're going to barter, read Selco's uh, stuff about bartering. Uh, and, and what's the name of that? Uh, One year in hell, or or I think the book's name is One Year in Hell. Uh, Selko's book. Just look up Selko Begovic. Now the C is a hot check C, so it's uh, Begovic, V I C, but it has a hot check over it, which makes it a ch sound in in, uh, in Slavic. But but it's pronounced. It's written Begovic, and we pronounce it Begovic. Um, No, I wish we were the Utah community. God, those people have got their stuff together. Um, I, I will tell you that much. Uh, oh, wow. I think most of us have a plan to, to hunker down until, uh, you know, things get sustainable outside. And the other thing is do as much as you can to not let people know that you're prepared. So that means, uh, you know, cooking in sync with what they are doing. 
And then when uh, it gets to the point to where the other people are starving off, that's where I'm going to be cooking inside with one of those indoor butane uh, stoves. And I'm going to be primarily boiling water and mixing it, let's say, with uh, nutrient survival stuff or with mountain house prepared foods that all you do is add boiling water to it and let it simmer and then eat it that way. I'll do that for a while. Then I'll transition over to my Algerson Farms and Thrive Life, where there's actual, like I've got components I'm going to be making meals. So, you know, there's a thought process there on how I'm going to do things because I want to be odor conscious. And that's both for the fire that I'm cooking with, as well as the odor of the foods that I am cooking, uh, because I don't want to betray the fact that I am eating while my friends, my neighbors are starving. Uh, no, it doesn't sound uh, terrible. That sounds uh, like a plan. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I do have a plan where I'm going to be giving uh, Vienna sausages, spaghettios, uh, oatmeal, you know, things like that to my neighbors who are in need. Uh, that's my obligation, but uh, that's about the extent of my obligation. Um, Okay, thank you for that, Red Scout. Um, yeah, I, you, you know that my, my car got totaled. So I had a Kia Sportage, and I, I was driving home from, where was I? I don't know where I was driving home from, but I came up from the river bottom, and I was coming up the hill up towards the house, and it just died on the side of the road. So I called my mechanic friend and he towed it to his uh, place. And he says, well, he says, your engine died. There's a recall on the engine on this, on this uh, Kia Sportage. And uh, so there's a chance that we might get you a new engine. He says, you're out of warranty, but you have perfect records as far as, you know, you've done perfect maintenance on your car. We took it to the Kia dealership. They said, yes, we will replace the engine for free. I had just bought brand new tires, four brand new tires. I didn't even have 500 miles on the tires. I had a brand new engine, less than 100 miles on the engine. I had a full tank of gas. And we had a hailstorm here in Central Texas, and it totaled my car. And I ended up paying for the tires and uh, for, for almost a year after that car was gone. So uh, I can understand where you're coming from. But it did give me a chance to get the, 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 the vehicle of my dreams, which was a Toyota Tacoma. Uh, I would love to have my F350 back, but, you know, Gosh, that eight miles to the gallon and the cost of diesel is not something you really, really want in nowadays. Uh, Killing Grillet, welcome. Good to see you. Uh, yes, I, I, I agree. Microgreens is fantastic to have, especially if you can grow them indoors. Um, you know, and, and I've talked about that little on Pepper. We That's one of my plans is uh, three days a week. Uh, start off with a base, uh, Bear Creek food, soups or something like that. <clears throat> chicken noodle soup, probably a good one. Uh, I, I think I've talked about stone soup or nail soup. Uh, in the in the army, I had a first sergeant who put a five gallon pot on top of a Yukon stove, and we took our MR our, our C, C rations at that time, and they came in cans. And so you take your entree can and pour it in. He had maybe a gallon of, of water down in the bottom. Pour your your entree in, with the exception of we didn't do the scrambled eggs. We wouldn't accept scrambled eggs inside the soup. And uh, I'm sorry, eggs scrambled with ham. Uh, but anyhow, we'd take everything else, put it in there. And you got one can full out of whatever, you, you know, when you put one can in, you got a can out. I'm thinking about doing the same thing here for the neighborhood. You bring something, you know, pasta, rice, meat, anything, and add to the soup, you can take out. Now, if you add meat, you're probably going to get two scoops instead of one. But, you know, same thing. I, I, I'm going to need fuel for the fire. I'm going to need water. So, you know, how you how you work that as far as how you're going to provide water, fuel, food for a soup kitchen for the for the neighborhood, that's going to be important. And little on prepper, I love you for thinking about that in advance. Uh, okay, let me see. Okay, so let me uh, so Oh, wow. That's a great idea, Manny. That is a fantastic idea. 
uh, except I would put it in some sort of a container before you put it in like that birdhouse, or else the birds might tear it up and use it for for uh, uh, bedding in their in their house. But what a great idea! Oh, you're a genius. Love it. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I do appreciate the thumbs up. I do appreciate shares. I do appreciate you mentioning the channel to other people. That's always great things. Yes, you can bury pre uh, precious things in, in mason jars in your yard. That would be fantastic as well. Another one of those great ideas. Uh, okay. And let me see here. Where are we? Okay. Let me uh, let me kind of... So, so my plan, uh, Manny, is... Uh, I've got what I asked my solar company to do is they normally install solar panels at 90% of average annual consumption. So, you know, they average out what it is over the summer and over the winter, what your consumption is. Then they, they put in your panels 90% of that. Of course, you use less in the winter than you do in the summer. And I said, no, I don't want 90% of average. I want 90% of peak. Uh, realizing that I'm not going to use the 220 volt uh, uh, air conditioner. I have gas dryer. I have a gas stove. So, you know, that doesn't take into consideration those things. And, and so my solar system for the house is 90% of peak consumption, uh, which won't happen for probably until August and September. Uh, but I will be able to run you know, through then. I also have the battery backup. So during the daytime, I have plenty of production. I have enough battery backup to last me through the night each night so I can recharge the battery during the daytime plus run things. Uh, the microwave is going to be critical. My, my coffee pot's going to be critical, you know, things like that. So uh, yeah, I, I recommend take, looking into solar if you have the opportunity. Um, so uh, Dragon Slayer has an outdoor kitchen. Oh, I'm jealous. I'm going to check you out. Uh, yes, make sure you have a Dutch oven with legs so you can put it above the coals. Um, okay, amazing grandma just left Florida. Uh, and so, hello, Roaming Prepper, welcome. And uh, for those of you who haven't been following him, he's been coming out with a lot of great shorts here recently. Uh, so I strongly recommend subbing to the roaming prepper. Uh, you know, in, in uh, speaking of which, uh, Triple G Farms, in, in uh, book six, uh, Steve Smith's books, um, and it's what, uh, I forget the name of it, but it's book six. He talks about the uh, uh, Viking preparedness, Pastor Joe Fox, uh, trading lumber uh, from the... Um, Ozarks taking that up and trading it with uh, the people from Stonemont uh, for their dairy cattle and, and their and their beef cattle. So yeah, they're, they're, barter is going to take a lot of different forms, and it's just I need something from you, you need something from me, and we can arrive in an agreement and a fair trade between the two. I don't think it's going to be as easy as a lot of people propose, but it is going to be out there as an option. <clears throat> okay, let me summarize this and give you everything that I've got. These are, I'm giving you these so that um, you can uh, just ask yourself some good questions. I'll put them in the notes and they'll be here tomorrow. Uh, so tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, I have my cane fighting class. And then tomorrow afternoon at two o'clock, I go visit a neighbor, uh, which is what we call them in St. Vincent de Paul, as somebody who needs a little bit of help with, uh, uh, I'm not sure what it is yet. We'll find out when we get there and talk to her, uh, but uh, see what we can do to help a neighbor in need. So I, I will spend some time in between the two, hopefully editing the live and get this out. But I'm going to put these 15 things, things I need for you to ask yourself questions on. If these things happen, how can I reduce the impact of that in my life? So number one, no electricity in my home for modern appliances. Number two, no public water purification or distribution. Number three, no clean clothes. Number four, limited hand washing and bathing. Uh, number five, no climate control, that air conditioning and heating if it's electrical based. 
Number six, no sewage disposal. Number seven, no trash disposal. Number eight, no emergency services, fire, police, ambulance, emergency room, pharmacy, uh, mortuary services. That's going to be one you got to think out as well. Uh, you know, it, it, given what we're facing, people are going to die. What are you going to do with the bodies? Uh, number nine, no medicine, either over the counter or prescription. Make plans for that now. Uh, number 10, no communications. How are you going to uh, find out whether, um, you know, you're not going to have internet, texting, phones, TV, radio, 911. How are you going to get local, national, and other news? Uh, if you're going to get into ham radio, I strongly recommend that you not get into the repeater-based uh, UHF, SHF, you know, Baofengs and, and Yesus, get into the uh, what, what's called shortwave or high frequency, 3 to 30 megahertz, um, the, the, the HF single sideband is going, or continuous wave, if you know Morse code, uh, is going to be extremely important um, for communications with the out, outside world. As a matter of fact, in book six of A American's books, he talks about, and we'll talk about that at the end of this month, the last Thursday of this month when we do the book review on him, he talks about a, a, a network of ham radio operators here in the U.S., uh, who are devoted to a post-apocalyptic event. And he talks about that in book six of his, uh, of his books. And so I'll be reviewing that at the end of the month. Number seven, uh, I'm sorry, number 11, no fuel for, for automobiles, generators, supply chains, uh, all that kinds of stuff. Um, number 12, you aren't going to have any food available to you. Uh, number 13, you aren't going to have access to gardening supplies, farming needs, fertilizer, seeds, uh, all that kinds of stuff. Number 14, you aren't going to have any banking, ATMs, credit cards, checks, anything like that. You're going to need currency. You're going to need uh, precious metals. You're going to need something uh, as exchange for currency. And then, of course, there's also going to be barter as a part of that as well. And then 15, you're going to have crazy people. You're going to have to know how to protect yourself and defend your family against crazy people. Uh, so that's kind of uh, where we are. And if there's nothing else, uh, let me see what we got here. Uh, Manny Fregosa, yes. But if, with, with, if I use a standard cane, uh, I can take that on an airplane because it's a medical device. I walk with it anyway. And if I have a dagger inside of it and it's seen on x-ray, they'll take my, my uh, cane away from me. However, if I use it primarily as a medical device and know how to use it as a weapon, it is a medical device and they can't take it away from me. So uh, I recommend that if you're going to do it, the American Cane Self-Defense, ACSD, um, and you can do that online, study how to learn uh, how to use a cane, uh, a standard walking cane as a defensive item. It's kind of like a Screta or a... Uh, a short bow, uh, if you will. So, or is a long baton. Okay. Uh, so yeah. And so Roman preppers talk about bow. bow, bow means bow is the, uh, uh, Asian word for staff. Some people call it bow staff. That's like saying staff, staff, uh, same thing with saying chai tea. Uh, chai is Indonesian, Malay, Chinese, Korean for tea. So when you say chai tea, it's saying tea tea. Um, okay, let's go here. Does anybody know what the art of, um, oh, what's it called? Uh, anyhow, there, there's a word. And it means using an acronym or abbreviation and expanding the last letter, thereby becoming redundant. Uh, so it's like, like saying, what is your VIN number? So VIN stands for vehicle identification number. So when you say VIN number, you're saying vehicle identification number number. Or if you say PIN number, that's personal identification number. So that PIN number is personal identification number number. Uh, anyhow, uh, here we are. Numbers, chapter 6, verses 24, 25, 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you kindly and grant you peace. Uh, so I'm going to ask you to do me a big favor. Uh, 
remember that we're all in this together because we want to come out the other side together. We, we want to be a family. We want to take care of each other. We want to pray for each other. We want to keep each other safe. We want to think about how can we mitigate the things that we need in order for us to survive, not only survive, but to thrive, uh, regardless of what happens to us. So what can we do to take care of ourselves and take care of our neighbors? So remember that we're all in this together so we can come out the other side together. Please be kind polite and respectful with each other because togetherness is the key. Everybody take care. I'm going to start doing, uh, I've got some books coming in tomorrow. I've got, I've been working on this one. This is my high school English book that I lost and had to pay for. Uh, so this is the senior English book from the class of 1969 in El Paso, Texas. Uh, so I'm going to be talking about English grammar. We're going to do that separate uh, series, probably something every other day. I'm also going to, I realize people don't realize, people haven't no study civics in government anymore. So I'm going to also, I've got a, a civics book, a high school civics book that I'm going, that I've found I'm going to be using it. We're going to go through learning civics and the constitution and things like that. So I'm going to add two more discussions. Uh, they're going to be classes that I'll be presenting in the form of videos, not necessarily as live discussions, but it's going to be English grammar and U.S. government. Take care, everybody. Have a blessed evening. Bye-bye.